clouds and a snow shower. Then clearing skies, a low tonight near 16. Tomorrow, sunshine, some afternoon clouds, a high of 35. Considerable cloudiness on Thursday, a rain or snow shower, a high 40. I'm Mike Ellis with your Hudson Valley weather. This report is brought to you by Mowers and More in Socrates. When it's time for a new snowblower, turn it on. Oh, oh yeah, at Mowers and More. who drive around looking for commercial vehicles and what they do is a very strict roadside inspection. So I've been driving this truck six years and I've never been stopped before. I usually just try to avoid the areas that they hang out because, you know, they, they, they'll give, I've heard horror stories of people getting stopped and ending up with extremely expensive fines. Um, I, I've even heard, you know, they'll write you tickets on issues with brand new trucks, so you pretty much get tickets no matter what when you see those guys. I've heard, I don't know. As you can see from my dash cam video that it was just a little bit of uh, bad timing on my part to get caught like that, but um, you know, the, the reason those guys are out there is actually a good reason because there are vehicles, or there can be vehicles going down the road that are in unsafe condition to be operated and sometimes the drivers just don't care. You know, I've seen it a lot with pickup trucks and stuff. There'll be issues with brakes or, or safety chains or something and, uh, you know, they just don't care. Especially, um, sometimes fleet vehicles, like where the person driving the vehicle, like the truck belongs to a company and they hire the drivers. And the driver is not necessarily a mechanic and doesn't really care about the condition of the vehicle and sometimes the bosses don't care either because as long as it's running that um, so it is important that the vehicles are inspected going down the road since this is my truck I own it and I'm the only person that's been driving it for the past six years and I'm the only one who does any repairs to it I feel I know the truck very well and it is in safe condition but so I did end up having a few minor issues with my truck and that's why I brought it in here today. I'm going to correct all those issues and do a few other repairs to it that are minimal but I just want the truck to be in as good as condition as possible. So first let me go over the issues that he found. Alright so my old fire extinguisher, it was, the gauge was just out of the green into the red. So that, that was, he said that was no good. Um, which is a little frustrating because it was a fire extinguisher that had never been used before and um, you know and it just lost pressure just like that you know it had a date on it it was only it was eight years old so that's a little annoying but I so I bought a new one you know this one you can see it's in the green and uh, I went to a place that only sells like welding supplies and pressurized tanks and stuff and uh, because I feel like the stuff you could get there is better quality than at Lowe's. The old fire extinguisher I had was a kitty. And, you know, the guys at, at this place, that's what they serve as fire extinguishers there. And they said the kitties are junk. So, uh, well, this one was obviously more money, but hopefully it's, it doesn't lose its pressure just sitting there for no reason. But I'll certainly keep an eye on it because it needs to be there. Um, the other issue I had, my, my name needs to be on the truck. I didn't know that, so, he, you know, it wasn't a big deal. He just said put your name on the truck. One of my rear tires was a little soft. So let me describe this. Now, he did a level two vehicle inspection. So he started out, he checked the, the officer checked all the lights. He checked the wipers, the horn, the windshield washer fluid, 
make sure all the glass was clean, make sure my heater and my defroster worked. He checked all the tires, checked the fire extinguisher, he checked to make sure I had the safety triangles, checked my license, registration, insurance, DOT physical card. He checked all my air warning stuff, the air pressure gauge, the low pressure warning buzzer, and the low pressure light. Made sure all that stuff was working. Uh, so the, tr the truck had the three minor physical problems with it. And then there was two more paperwork issues that I had that I didn't know about. I hadn't filled out my MCS-150 form. I didn't even know what it was, but I guess it's, the, it's a biannual registration for registering the DOT number. So, I mean, they, they don't even send you notifications that you need to do this stuff. So I took care of that, you know, that day. That was easy, but I'll have to put it on my calendar every two years. I got to do that. I wish they would tell you. And... And the other issue I had was with my license, and I, and I did some more research on it. It looks like it was DMV's mistake, but they had downgraded my license from an A license to a D and never told me about it because my, they said my medical ID card, because um, to, ha to have a truck like this, you got to go get a physical every two years and then carry a card on you that, makes, that says that you know, you're healthy to be operating a commercial vehicle. And... I fax it to the DMV because you're supposed to, the doctor doesn't do it, you have to do it. So I faxed it to the DMV and I had all the paperwork from when I faxed it and apparently they didn't get it or lost it or something so, you know, that was an issue. My license, was, I didn't know. So I went to DMV that day and took care of it. You know, I even showed the officer like, well, here's my DOT physical card. But, you know, so, you know, it was just paperwork issues and, you know, the guy was cool. He understood. He's like, look, just take care of this paperwork issue. You know, it's like you obviously have a Class A license. It's just is a issue of paperwork. So that that's fixed. So, all right. So the truck's in here. Let me fix those three other issues, and I'm gonna fix a few other things on the truck just to make it as good as it as it can be. All right. So let's get my name on the side of the truck. So got some stencils here. All right. I need a lot of A's, let's see. There's two A's. All right, I need another N. I don't have it, so I gotta make one. All right, that looks pretty good. All right, I have this 22.5 truck rim here, and it's got a bald tire on it. So I just bought this brand new tire right here. So I'm gonna mount this tire on this rim. Now all the air is out of it, so now you got to break the bead. 
It's usually pretty easy on these. All right, that tool's not gonna work, hang on. All right, so I got this slide hammer bead breaker thing. Flip it over to the other side. All right, cool, now that's off. Now you always wanna try, the tires have to come off this way. So like if this was mounted on the rear of the truck, you could change the tire on the truck. Because the, the tire won't come off the rim the other way. And, and you'll spend, trust me, you'll spend plenty of time fighting with it. But it just won't go. So I'm gonna step on that side. This is called a tire spoon right here. You want to get the tire down into this groove. All right, you know, I'm sure I'd get this tire off if I fought with it long enough, but you know, it's 20 degrees out right now, it's cold and stiff, and this tire is garbage. So there's no reason to save it. So I'm just going to cut it off. Alright, now that would be a lot easier. It's really important that the uh, bead is clean and there's nothing wrong with this area right here. All right, I have this tire machine. I always do like light truck tires on it, but.
Let me see if it'll work on this truck tire. It's been a few days since I put this tire on. Let me check the air pressure again to make sure it hasn't lost any pressure. All right, great. That's exactly where it was a few days ago. So I know this tire is good to go. Both of these tires were put on here at the same time as new tires. And you can see how much more worn out this one is because 
it's very important that these, I think this one had a slow leak, so you can feel it's a little bit, it's soft. So, I mean, this is still technically a legal tire, you know, because the amount of tread it has. I think 230 seconds is the requirement, but I'm just putting a brand new tire on it. I'm going to try to see where this was leaking and fix it and keep this as a spare. Before I put this one back on, let me just check the air pressure in it. Yeah, it's 90. That should be a little, should be 123. These are great. These things, you could just clip them on and, uh, you know, let it fill up. You know, you don't need to stand there holding it the whole time. All right, 125. That's good. All right, when you put these tires on here, you know, you got to make sure you put the valve stems away from the from the these. Yeah, I usually put them right in the center, and I, don't, I usually don't put the valve stems in the same spot. Like here's this one here, so I'll put this one in a different spot. All right, now it's really important with this type of rim that everything is in flush all the way because you can. It is possible to clamp these on here crooked. All right, so that's all on. It's in, and it's important, you know, sometimes these rims will actually slip on this hub. So you see how this, the valve stems right in the center of it. Um, you know, you want, I mean, it's got these nubs here that are supposed to stop it. Otherwise, the valve stem will rip off. But, you know, you really want to make sure these are tight. And, uh, and you know, if you feel it slip, or you just keep an eye on it. You know, you might have to tighten it up again, too. All right, while I'm messing with tires, I might as well go around and check the air pressure in every one. Every tire has got 125 PSI in it now. I checked them all, they're all right around 100, so, you know, they're all fine, but, you know, 125 is better. All right, so this, this is the tire that's soft. It's not completely flat, but it's soft. I, it's probably, let me see if I can find a leak and fix it. Alright, so I'm going to put air in it, and I got some bubbly soap to spray on it, and you, you look for bubbles to find the leak. Alright, I found the leak. Look at that, the valve stem was leaking the whole time. You know, I know that's not really the right way to fix it, but it's not that tightened it. It's not leaking. All right, well, obviously, I'm not installing this tire on the truck right now anyway, so. All right, I'll just keep this as a spare now. I think it's fixed. I have fixed everything now that DOT asked me to fix. Now I want to do a little more work to the truck to make the thing as good as it can be, so. One issue the truck has had for a while now is this bad rocker panel here. Now the frame on this truck doesn't have a drop of rust on it and even the cab and doors and everything are solid. Even the rocker panel on the other side is fine. Just for whatever reason this one here rusted out. So I got, a, I got a brand new piece. Now this is off like I think this was off an F-150 or something so it's a little bit different but it's close enough. Alright I just finished changing that rocker panel. All right, this this pipe here needs a clamp on it. All 
You know, that's been like that for like two years and it took me two minutes to fix. <laughs> I should have fixed it a while ago. All right, another thing that's got to be commonly adjusted is on the front air brakes. This is the air can that makes the brakes move. It pushes out. And see, that's right about at the point where it needs to be adjusted again because you don't want to have too much. This only has a limited amount of travel. And if the brakes are too far of an adjustment, your brakes aren't working. So it's super easy to do and it has to be done pretty often. And I know DOT guys usually check for this. But all you got to do is pretty much turn that. And you can see this turning down here. And probably right about there. Drop tighter. Right there. Okay, so now when I pull this, I can only go about just under an inch. So I gotta do both sides. And the rear on this truck is self adjusting. So, alright, I got this grease gun at a yard sale. I got a good deal on it. But this thing's cool. I've had it for years now. And, um,. It uses like this little barrel of grease and it's still got the grease it came with. I've never even had to put grease in this thing yet, so. So whenever I'm greasing an excavator or something, which takes like tubes of grease, I'll just use this. You hook it up to air. And this is what you use here. That's good, oil's right where it should be. everything DOT wanted me to fix and I fixed a few other things that you know I should have probably fixed a while ago so uh, my trucks in real good shape for the upcoming 2018 work season um, you know, it's nice to know it's in real good condition the other thing I fixed on this too it was a few days before but the uh, the gas pedal was like out of adjustment and the truck wasn't getting full throttle and the thing was like really slow I was only getting like half throttle and I didn't I didn't really realize it, but I fixed it, so it's getting full throttle now. The thing is so much faster. You know, it's such a good feeling to be able to step on the gas. 